Okay, here we have a 1975 Honda CR250 and this is a bike that my wife has started racing and she's getting on quite well with it. She's enjoying it quite a bit. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was to install a new electronic ignition system for it and um, I've gone with an HPI ignition. So uh, I actually import HPI ignitions into the UK so I can uh, source those for you at a decent prices if uh, it's something that you want. Uh, so the kit is a complete kit. Uh, it includes everything. So it's got an extra backing plate. So the backing plate on this stator must not quite fit. I'm not taking it apart, the, the original apart yet. Uh, but that must be why that's in there. It comes with a stator. It comes with a new flywheel. It comes with a CDI and it comes with mounting hardware for the, the stator and the backing plate and the uh, then, it, then it comes with a coil of which that is a mounting plate for it. Sometimes they are not needed so a lot of the stuff in this kit is uh, generic so uh, sometimes the bits and pieces are not needed. You get with the kit some instructions. Now then, there's not a lot to a lot of the instructions, uh, but what there is, critically, there's two things. One is it shows you how to remove the wires out of some of the plugs. So sometimes this plug here that comes off the stator, which, uh, effectively goes through sometimes it has to feed through the frame uh, and so that plug there you sometimes need to take off it doesn't look as though i will need to take it off on this one but we'll we'll know that in more detail very shortly uh, so that's one bit of information that it gives you and the other bit of information that it gives you is how to set the timing which will go through in a bit more detail very very shortly so first job is to take the ignition cover off and we'll remove the existing flywheel and um, all of the bits and pieces that are in there we're going to take the tank off we're going to take the uh, existing coil and stuff like that off and just remove all the wiring and then we're going to replace it with our new stuff so i'll uh, crack on and do that so here we go. So we, this is the first thing to know, really. And you, you can check it when the rest of this is stuff, off, stuff is off, but may as well check it now. So on the timing instructions, there's two options. One option is if your motor is turning over clockwise, so, or anti-clockwise. And if it's turning over anti-clockwise, you basically set your stator and the... Uh, the flywheel up differently so you see on the flywheel there is an HPI logo and it tells you if your motor's turning round clockwise you time it using this timing mark here and if it's turning anti-clockwise you time it using this mark here so this motor here as you will see if I can get my hand it's always awkward when you've got one set of hands. You will see that that is turning anti-clockwise, so we need to follow the second set of instructions. So we'll take that to set of points, because that's what this is. It's, it's points on this motor. Uh, so it's going to be a big advantage going up to the electronic ignition you know, for the reliability and performance. It's mainly the performance that we're after so uh, we'll take that off and then we'll uh, start installing okay, it. so that's the original ignition removed so just use the flywheel puller so there's a flywheel that lives inside the electronics basically points um, and that flywheel slides on goes over a woodruff key with the hpi system we're not going to reuse the woodruff key so we're going to remove that 
I just used a flywheel puller to take that out. I actually used like a three leg flywheel puller. Um, just because there's not a lot of meat. Um, not a lot of difference between the shaft size of the crank and the flywheel itself. So yeah, so I'll just remove that and then we'll uh, crack on with uh, installing the, the stator and the stator plate. I'll just have a quick look at that and take a picture of it in a second when we've got that done and then we can put the flywheel on. So the flywheel is just going to be held on by the, effectively it's going to be held on by the taper and it's only the taper that's going to stop it from spinning. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll take that woodruff key out and then uh, get it sorted. Okay, so actually a slight change of plan because these little locators here, uh, the, uh, the countersunk screws that were sent for M6 and not M8, but also they don't actually quite line up. So using the outside locators on the on the backing plate um they almost lined up but i've had to just do a little bit of modification so straight out of the box uh the kit hasn't fit uh, and i've got another problem as well um i've sent um i've sent hpi the information uh, about what i've had to do um so I would hope that any future kits for this model um, are, uh, are resolved. Um, if HPI need any more information, I'll, uh, I'll get that across them, any measurements and stuff. Uh, the next problem that I've got is with the flywheel. So the flywheel on the crank here, um, and as you can see, the crank, the, uh, the threads on the crank don't go all the way into the into the flywheel um, so when you tighten the uh, when you tighten the nut up it's not going to hold the flywheel in place so I'm just gonna have to make a little spacer to go uh, between the between the flywheel and then up into a bit of meat on the on the threads um, so that I can I can tighten the flywheel up uh, and get it timed up so again that's something that you shouldn't have to do uh, and uh, I'll, I'll feed the information back to uh, back to HPI, so hopefully future kits won't have that problem. So I've made the spacer which is going to fit in between the nut on the uh, on the end of the crank and the flywheel, so that's going to hold that in place. Uh, I'm then going to get the timing uh, there or thereabouts. Um, so what I'm going to do. I've taken the spark plug out and I'm going to use my little timing tool. So this is going to measure uh, the distance from top dead centre. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to bolt this down into the into the spark plug hole, and then I'm going to work, turn the engine over until I get to top dead centre, and then I'm going to turn it back two millimetres. Uh, so two millimeters is the general measurement that I'd use on a on a single cylinder two stroke. It can be adjusted from there, uh, but uh, that's where that's where we're going to be at. And then I'm going to once I'm at two uh, millimeters from top dead center, I'm then going to align this timing mark here because the engine spins anti clockwise, not clockwise. Uh, so that's the bit to be really cautious of uh, with the. Uh, with the timing mark on the stator, which uh, is difficult for you to see, uh, but it's uh, it's on this side of the stator because it, again it's an anti-clockwise uh, motor. So we're going to uh, we're going to just do that now. Okay, so now that's all in place, uh, we're going to uh, just run the wiring out of the ignition cover. So there was a rubber a rubber grommet basically which lived um, on the old wire coming out of the points. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna slice that off with a Stanley knife and then I'm just gonna make enough room um, inside it um, for the new wiring to go through. 
and then uh, that can come out of the original rubber then and then we can feed this wiring up to where to where on up on the frame to where we're going to locate the uh, the CDI and the and the coil and then uh, we can uh, plug it in and um, we can uh, we can see if we've got a spark and then uh, just make sure the kill switch is working on that and then we can uh, see if she fires up. Okay, so we've got it wired up, so the plug coming out of the stator goes up and connects into the CDI. The black and white wire goes to one of the wires of the kill switch. The other of the wires of the kill switch goes to an earth point. Uh, and then there's another wire that comes out of the CDI uh, with a spade connector, which attaches to the, uh, to the coil here. And the coil mounts onto the frame <clears throat> and it has to have it has to have a good earth so so basically the metal part of the coil and the kill switch and uh there's also there's another there's another cable that comes out of cdi uh, which also needs to be earthed so all of those basically when you do a continuity test uh, and i normally use a, a multimeter with a tone uh when you do a continuity test. Basically what you're looking for is continuity when you touch uh, the metal part of the coil or that bolt uh, to uh, the back of the stator, so, or, or a part of the engine really. Uh, and it's that, it's that con continuity between those components that, uh, that is gonna produce the, the power to deliver the spark. Uh, and then the other thing that you're looking for is, obviously I mentioned that the kill switch would plug into earth. So that's the green wire out of the kill switch that plugs into earth. And that's the black and white wire that goes to the CDI. So when the kill switch is pressed, basically what it's doing is it's, uh, it's making an earth connection. And because it makes an earth connection, um, it, uh, it prevents a, a future spark from occurring. So um, that's, uh, that's what we're looking for. So I've put those things together. Uh, the wiring, like I say, is, is simple when you, know, when you know what the bits and pieces do. Uh, and we've got a spark and the kill switch works. So the next job is I'm just gonna tidy a couple of things up and then I'm just gonna, uh, just gonna make sure it runs really. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that video in a second. Okay, so now I've got other bits and pieces to do for this bike. So I'm gonna do some carb work on it and uh, a new inlet manifold and this that and the other coming. Uh, but, so we've just installed the, uh, the ignition and uh, we've timed it up and this that and the other as, as we've been through and um, after about three kicks she fired up. Amazing. She does sound to be revving better than she did do with the original ignition. So I'm expecting uh, that the bike will be quicker uh, with the HPI on it. As you can see there, all installed. You followed the process nice and easy and uh, seems to be working like a good one. So um, if you want to get an HPI ignition for your uh, 1970s CR250M, uh, give me a shout and I can, uh, I can get one sorted for you.